Welcome everyone to the first session of your health and safety program. First of all, we're going to start with why we should manage workplace health and safety and basic HSE definitions. The first concept we need to discuss is safety. Safety refers to the condition of being safe or being free from danger. Realistically, there is no such place that is 100% safe. Hazards are all around us in workplaces uh, or outside workplaces as well. However, we are required by law to reduce the levels of risk as reasonably practicable as uh, possible. Moving on to the next concept, which is accidents. Accidents refer to an event that takes place unexpectedly with unfortunate results. Of course, most accidents, statistics and research shows, are preventable. Accidents usually end in some kind of loss or harm to humans or to the organization or to the infrastructure that we have. Finally, we have incidents. Incidents include all undesired circumstances, covering near misses, uh, injuries, financial losses or asset damage. Um, and all of these, of course, could escalate to even further um, certain like consequences leading to accidents. Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and it's not merely the absence of a disease. Um, that's why it's important to not only check on the physical aspect of health among our employees, it's also important to ensure that they are socially comfortable, that they are mentally stable and healthy. Safety, however, refers to the absence of physical danger and it's important to distinguish between health hazards and safety hazards. Unfortunately, these are used interchangeably a lot of times. However, health hazards refer to diseases or uh, disorders resulted, resulting from the workplace, from the work environment, whereas safety refers to the absence of physical hazards causing injuries, so things like falls from height, things like burns, electrocution, slips, trips and falls, all refer to safety hazards. And a lot of the times, unfortunately, statistics and case studies focus on safety hazards more than health hazards because safety hazards are more phys uh, visible. They are physical hazards at the end of the day. So they are much, much easier to spot, to calculate and analyze than health hazards because typically health hazards require much longer time to develop and show symptoms, can take up to decades. And that's why we don't really have much clear or accurate statistics of health hazards and we only know uh, about these hazards after too long and when the damage is done. Finally, we have welfare, which refers to the facilities used by employees, visitors, or anyone who might be affected by our work. These facilities are used to rest, to relax, cleaning rooms, washing rooms, toilets, eating areas, etc. And these are a legal requirement. They need to be provided to our staff, they need to be provided to our contractors, and anyone who occupies our workplace or is a part uh, of our workplace. First aid refers to the treatment given to a person who is injured or ill. We need to distinguish here that this treatment is not medical professional providing treatment. Basically, it, the aim of first aid is just to prevent the condition from worsening and to save life. And that's why in first aid, we focus on stopping bleeding, for example, uh, CPR, uh, heart resuscitation, and that is it. And of course, first aid needs to be provided by a licensed individual, a trained individual, and cannot, and it's illegal actually to, to be provided by anyone of the uh, general public. A person who is conducting first aid needs to be certified and trained. An emergency is a situation which requires a very fast action due to the high level of consequences associated with it. So examples of emergencies are um, various. They could be natural disasters like uh, floods, heavy winds, storms, earthquakes. It could be uh, an act of violence like a, a terror.
terrorist attack, theft. It could be a fire, explosion, a release of a hazardous chemical, for example, all of which we need to include in our emergency plan and we need to train our staff on how to handle it and how to, uh, to act in such uh, scenarios. We also need to know the meaning of the term hazard. Hazard is anything that has the potential to cause harm. And if we look around us uh, all over, we will find out that hazards actually exist in every place and everything around us can be potentially a hazard. For the most mundane, simple tools and equipment that we use on a daily basis, they can form a source of harm in some circumstances. Take for example a water bottle. This water bottle has the potential to cause harm in several ways. It has the potential to cause burns if this water was really, really hot. It has the potential to cause slips and falls if the water would uh, leak from the bottle. It has the potential to cause poisoning if the water was contaminated. That's why we need to keep an open mind when we are looking for hazards and we need to tolerate a level of, of risk and hazards around us because realistically hazards are there wherever we go. Of course, hazards can be categorized into several groups. Generally, they are categorized into physical hazards, things like lighting, noise, vibration. There is also a category of chemical hazards, so corrosive, harmful, toxic, uh, carcinogenic chemicals. There is uh, organizational or psychological hazards, so things like stress, their violence, bullying. Uh, there is also a um, hazard associated with the use of machinery, mechanical hazards like uh, rotating parts, uh, stabbing injuries. Uh, it could also uh, include injuries like crushing injuries, for example. So these are generally the types of hazards that you would expect to find in the workplace. Risk is the probability of occurrence of harm from a particular hazard. In order to identify or evaluate the level of risk, we need to take into account two elements or two factors. The first is likelihood. So, what is the chance of occurrence of this uh, hazardous event or this harm? How likely is it that people or our organization as a whole is going to be affected from this hazard? We need to look at the severity as well, so the level of damage, loss and injury. How serious is the consequence resulting from this hazard? How many people are going to be uh, exposed to this, uh, to this harm? Of course, the higher the likelihood, the higher the severity or the consequences, the higher the risk. And that highlights how important it is to accurately evaluate the level of risk, taking into account what activities, people, and also the working hours, the exposure to these hazards as well. It's important to distinguish the difference between hazards and risks because very widely they are used interchangeably. However, as we have seen, they have entirely different meanings and backgrounds. So it's very important for a health and safety practitioner to understand the difference and to use these terms accurately. Now, in terms of the responsibilities of uh, employers, by law, employers are required to protect the health and safety of their employees, first of all, and then anyone who is affected by their operation, by their organization. Of course, these, uh, this anyone refers to neighboring communities, it refers to contractor conducting the project or the work for the client, or the employer. It also refers to the public, visitors, uh, cleaners, maintenance staff, um, anyone really that can be affected by our work. So it's a wide scope. We're not only focusing on our employees. Our responsibilities go beyond that. There is a moral side to all of this. And the moral side, which we will talk about uh, perhaps uh, in detail in the upcoming sli slides, is a human part of it. Health and safety all, uh, is all based on the 
human values. As normal human beings, healthy human beings, we don't like to see others getting hurt in any way. And I'm not just talking about humans, we're talking about all living creatures. We don't like others to get hurt, whether physically or even emotionally or psychologically. So the whole idea of managing health and safety at work stems from that. We have a duty of care as humans towards each other, whether we are employers, we are employees, we need to look for and take care of others. Okay? Particularly if an employer has a group of employees, he has provided the workplace for them, equipment, materials, and he has actually recruited these people, he or she, they are responsible for ensuring that these workers, these employees, these groups are in a safe and healthy environment. Okay, so there's a, a moral side to it. And the legal side also stems from that duty of care that we mentioned earlier. There are several examples of legal requirements for health and safety at work. The best example is the Health and Safety at Work Act in the UK, which was established in 1974. Uh, it changed health and safety all around the world. It was a very successful story of implementing health and safety at work after a long decades of uh, struggles and challenges between the authorities and business owners and employers. Um, I would suggest that you go and read more about this uh, topic, Health and Safety at Work Act in 1974. Um, it was a game changer in health and safety management and a lot um, other countries all around the world were inspired by this regulation. It removed or took off the responsibility of managing health and safety from the authorities to the employers. So it's, it's had a lot more uh, focus on the importance of employers identifying the hazards, evaluating the risks and coming up with solutions themselves. It held the employers accountable for all of these aspects. Risk management, the burden of risk management moved from um, the authorities to the employers. On the other side, it gave employers more um, freedom and chance to be creative with what kind of control measures they come up. So actually, it, it allowed industries to be more innovative, more competitive, and come up with more efficient solutions to health and safety problems. If you want to talk about the Middle East and Oman, particularly where we are, most of us are based, the MD-286, which was issued in 2008, is considered the first health and safety regulation that clearly sets the boundaries for occupational safety and health. Um, and it's a great reference to go back to and check. I would suggest that you read that as well for background reading. Um, it is applicable to the private sector, mainly, and the Ministry of Manpower in Oman is in charge of enforcing uh, these regulations through visits from inspectors um, on a regular basis. Uh, it is going through uh, some modifications and reviews as we speak uh, to come up with more detail, but as a first step, it's a great, great example of the government and the leadership dedication to managing health and safety at work. Moving on to the economic aspect of health and safety, if you read about the history of health and safety in the world, particularly in the UK where it's very, very well recorded, you find a lot of studies on that, you'll find that the main reason why, or, or the, the, the game changer really in managing health and safety was all the studies and statistics uh, conducted by experts on the economic impact of health and safety accidents. That what made employers finally convinced of the importance of managing health and safety at work. It made them realize that health and safety cost is really not just a cost, it's an investment. Um, aside from the moral and legal aspects which should be really on top of the priorities, um, the economic or financial aspect really highlighted how significant health and safety management is uh, to the sustainability of projects and businesses and how much it really affected the productivity and the quality of work regardless of the industry that the employer was specialized in. In general, it had a huge impact on the
profit of organizations and their reputation and on business opportunities naturally. And that these three aspects, moral, legal, and economic or financial, highlight to you why there's so much attention uh, worldwide on health and safety at work, why there's so much dedication, so much uh, resources invested in managing uh, this important topic. I wanted to add uh, a little uh, bit of a detail when we are talking about the moral aspect, which we often oversee or it's often misunderstood. When you talk about the topic of religion in association with the moral aspect of health and safety, in our society, in the Middle East generally, there's a misunderstanding of the religious aspects and particularly related to destiny. A lot of people believe that accidents are destined and there is nothing we can do about them, which is a false understanding. If we have a deeper, more analytical approach, destiny does not work this way. Only if you have taken all of your precautions, if you have led by um, causes, really, as we, as we say. So taking into consideration all the possible precautions in place, only then you can say that an accident is a destiny. But it's really unacceptable nowadays to behave or, or to, be, to have such beliefs because statistics and science show that 70% of accidents are preventable. So it's not really an excuse anymore. Moving on to the next point here on this slide, which is the responsibilities of workers. Of course, health and safety is teamwork. Um, the biggest responsibility and accountability Accountability is for employers because they have more power. So naturally they will be more responsible and accountable in the eyes of authorities or law. However, workers do have uh, rights and they do have responsibilities to health and safety. Their responsibilities cover, uh, first of all, uh, cooperating with the management and implementing health and safety systems and procedures and following those as well ensuring that um, accidents, near misses, or any hazards are reported promptly to the management in order to take the corrective action. And the rights, the most important part of, uh, of rights of workers include having a safe and healthy work environment and also being allowed to stop unsafe work. All of these are generic guidelines and you'll find these in health and safety regulations all around the world, perhaps using different terminology, but the, the concepts are the same. Finally, move on to the role of enforcement authorities. Enforcement authorities play a vital role in implementing health and safety regulations. Authorities are in charge of enforcing and inspecting uh, organizations to ensure that they're abiding by these uh, legal requirements. Of course, before an accident, so they have a proactive role to play, conducting ongoing uh, or periodic inspections, asking for evidence and records, and monitoring really the management of health and safety at work before something goes wrong. And then an af after an accident happens at work, of course, that is going to depend on the level of that accident, how serious it is, the level of damage and harm to people. But enforcing authorities also play a role in investigating accidents, finding out the root causes and uh, enforcing perhaps the corrective measures or actions that need to be adopted by organizations to prevent these accidents from happening again. An important role of enforcing authorities as well is the education and awareness. So, share, so sharing all of these stories of accidents, near misses with the industries and with the society really in order to raise the level of awareness and enhancing safety culture in the, in, in the country as a whole. So enforcement authorities play a very, very important role in managing health and safety. An important aspect as well to managing health and safety as work is compensation for injuries at work. There are several models for uh, compensation uh, schemes. There's fault, no fault systems, and insurance companies do have a role to play uh, in this uh, equation. A lot of insurance companies nowadays in Oman and worldwide are refusing to insure organizations with poor 
health and safety standards. For example, if there was no recorded health and safety management system, if there was no health and safety policy, for example. So if you think about it, it's the insurance company who's going to pay for all the costs and losses resulting from accidents. So it makes much sense, really. But it also plays a role in, again, enhancing the health and safety culture in the place, raising the level of awareness, and indirectly enforcing employers and organizations to adapt uh, better health and safety management systems and prior prioritize health and safety management uh, in, in their uh, business as well. So, it's also important to have a good health and safety management system. Of course, there are several examples we can use nowadays. One of the most common examples was OHSAS 18001. OHSAS stands for Occupational Health and Safety Advisory Service. It's a UK body. And it's one of the most, it was actually, until recently, one of the most common examples or models used for uh, health and safety management systems. I say previously or until recently because ISO has come up with 45001, which is now, has taken the lead really from OHSAS and it's one of the most common uh, models used nowadays by organizations to manage health and safety standards. Um, and it's also convenient for organizations as ISO already has other management systems which are relevant, so environmental management system, quality, and it's easier to integrate and manage all of these different models if they are from the same certifying body. So, if we look at the statistics here on the screen, uh, it highlights the number and rate of fatal injuries to workers. These statistics are uh, taken from the UK's Health and Safety Executive. And you can see that over the years, starting from the year 94 all the way to the year 2014, as an example, there's generally a trend for fatalities and uh, fatal injuries at work uh, to decrease. And this, the reason for that can be several reasons. It can be better enforcement, it can be enhanced awareness and education, but it can also be uh, enhanced technologies and engineering solutions that will eliminate the need for employees to be present in hazardous uh, conditions. If we move on to the next slide, you can see the financial uh, and societal impact of health and safety accidents or issues on the society. You can see here the estimated uh, working days uh, lost due to work-related incidents. And uh, similarly, you can see that generally there is a trend from the year 2000 until the year 2014 to decrease. An important thing to notice here is the contrast between the number of uh, days lost due to an injury and days, work days lost due to a um, work-related illness or a health issue. And as you can see, health here uh, is, is, is the main reason really for all of these work days being lost. And that again highlights how significant it is to manage occupational uh, health. Going into the next slide, we look here directly at the cost to Britain, as an example, of workplace injury and new cases of work-related ill health. Um, similarly, you see here that the cost of uh, occupational illness is much, much higher than uh, injuries. However, uh, ironically, occupational health, as discussed earlier, does not receive the attention uh, that it deserves for the reasons mentioned earlier.